let's see what uh what's he up to i'll be with jeff later he's hopping on a plane this afternoon and i'll be i'll be at dinner with him tonight i mean i got some presents aka some cigars it was a song john g how are you here but a little echo oh you know why it's because i'm in this room let me move out this room hold on the t uh let me get out no i got out of base it's weird i'm in florida but no you can't sell cubans which is weird but i do have some out cigars they're my favorite they're like 35 a stick so they're pretty expensive you guys want to see my fine art I'll give you, there's my preview of my fine art. If you pay uh, five bucks a month, you get fine art on your TV by Van Gogh. I tried buying a Van Gogh, but it was, uh, let's just say, a little chunk of change. A little chunk of change. All right, let's go here, turn the light on. There we go. Should be good now. Not at Costco. Dude, I watched I watched this guy. I, I got to find the YouTube video. I watched this guy. And he made a he made the best deals for January at Costco video. And he had 200,000 views and he released it 9 hours ago. It was pretty wild. Guys, what's up? Jeff I watched this last night at like midnight. I thought it was the most entertaining video. It's called uh, The Deal Guy. 10 new items you need to buy in January. Like 300,000 views. Jeff, when are we getting famous on YouTube? <laughs> I don't know, bro. I think we have to take a different angle, different approach. I think we write too many articles. You need to make like more of like you chasing chickens, maybe me smoking cigars <laughs> and playing poker, crushing, crushing the two five oh, game. Yeah. You, how much did you make this weekend? That uh, was a nice return. Nothing too crazy. A few grand, whatever. But it did was fun. Play, did was you play fun. cash or a tournament? I played cash. My problem is I don't have a lot of time and uh, tournaments like yeah. they have. So... I live near, so for you, those of you guys that don't know, I live near uh, Seminole Hard Rock, not far from Seminole Hard Rock Hotel uh, in South Florida. And they have World Poker Tour events there. So they have this, uh, this big tournament going on, multi-day event, all different types of tournaments. So the hotel is just crawling with action, which is fun. And they're pros. You know, a lot of these guys, that's what they do for a living. So I also, for an ego, like banging on pros a little bit. You know, <laughs> they're like, what do you do? Because I don't know you. I'm like, I trade stocks. It's way better than this shit. <laughs> you, know who was, uh, you know who was real big in the, I think the tournament, probably cash games too, was uh, Einhorn. Yes. Yeah, he he's an awesome play. player. He's an awesome yeah, player. He would play the uh, high stakes games. And, he got to uh, the final table of the World Series of Poker once. The main event or? Uh, the main event. The wow. main event. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know, that, that's how the Bulzarians made their money. Oh, Pope. yeah, right. They were, <laughs> Armenian mafia in Tampa is how they really made their money. They, they had, so next, not about 10 minutes from me, because I grew up, my best friend was friends with the daughter and, uh, and their mom. Their moms were real close. And they had a helicopter pad in their house in, in uh, Avila, which is like a nice neighborhood and stuff. So they had like one of the biggest houses. I think it was like 15,000 square foot with a helicopter pad. Wow. Uh, and he, so he got in trouble. He went to the high school with my sister. He brought like an AR in the parking lot in the trunk. So they kicked oh, him wow. out of school. And, um, you know, obviously. AR. Yeah. And obviously, you know, when he got the trust fund money, that's when he started blowing up and, and everything like that. But you got to laugh how he made his, uh, 
Millions. Which is great. I mean, he's on the internet. He's got a lot. He's got a nice. Uh, he's got a nice uh, footprint on the internet. You could say on social media. Yeah, so. he got. He got. He got. Uh, he got in trouble though with the with the dope, the cannabis company, expensing it all. The 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 fuel mm. is life now. Oh, you know what I found that you know what I, I read this morning that was really interesting. So Sam SBF, right? Friedman, the guy yeah. from FTX, right? He's the, tweeting the again. He's, huh? tweet he's tweeting again. Yeah, but so he's got seven hundred million dollars still. Right? Oh, really? He has personally seven hundred million dollars. Guess what it's in? Guess what his assets in that he has it in? Oh, uh, Robinhood. Yes. Yeah, the stuff. Yeah, when he bought when he was the. Remember, he was like the angel saving Robin Hood. And but all don't you think it's kind of like bad for a bad look for Robin Hood that like King Ponzi schemer is like making hundreds of millions off y'all? You know, Robin Hood's up. That's like yeah, his thing. That's what he's got as his asset. But yeah, he said he had like, uh, what, 100 G's in the bank. That's it. Yeah, but think about it. It's like he stole these people's money, scammed yeah. people, took that money, lost it in crypto, but also took that money and bought Robin Hood stock. So that's ill gotten, right? What a mess. What a mess. I mean, if you really think that guy's broke, his parents they got him with bail for 25 million and they put like a million dollar house as collateral. Like, oh, I, there's another thing I wanted to talk to you about. That's like a massive financial story. That could be something we have to pay attention to. I know you don't like banks, but did you see Goldman got investigated by the Federal Reserve, not the SEC, not the Department of Justice, the Federal Reserve opened an investigation into Goldman Sachs for, uh, I don't know the exact terms, but basically like effing over retail savers, investors. You know, oh, when they rolled out like that big online shit campaign, uh, apparently yeah, yeah. like there was a big scam element to it. So the Marcus? Yes. Yes. Oh. They're in massive trouble for that. With the Fed, with the Fed. Because so, they, they made so many uh, claims about Marcus and the high yields and all that stuff like that. But yeah, like how they were acquiring that yield, I think, is, is under scrutiny right now. Like there might have been like a Ponzi aspect to that, too. Because typically, okay. like when people do that, they go, you know, buy money markets for that day and then maybe add like a little bit of juice by going a little bit further out in duration to get a little bit of extra yield to pump it up. But who knows? Who knows? Something to pay attention to. Something to pay attention to, because if they turn their gun on finance, look out, bro. If you, guys, if you guys don't know, all the Fed heads come from Goldman. I don't think we've ever had one that wasn't Goldman. Government sacks, government sacks. But they're eating their own. But like, are they going to start eating their own? I don't no, know. There's no way. There's no way. Like Kramer, where did Kramer come from? Right. You know, the the uh, Goldman. So the big thing, I mean, I would, could change is if Jamie Dimon you know, from JP Morgan becomes actually a Fed head, which I think would be probably the best thing because he's he's actually real. He's uh, smart. He's a smart guy. I like Jamie. I yeah. like Jamie. Yeah. And he warned, which you never hear in the media, but he warned like not the whole the storm is coming, but before that, you know, he warned about the markets and the Fed and about the economy. You know, he was basically talking he's warning shit. about crypto a lot too. He's been crypto, talking a lot of smack about crypto right now. Yeah, and and he was obviously he was right back then, but at the same time, J.P. Morgan opens up trading desk for crypto. You know, it's just they have to make money. You know, it's a oh yeah, but that's like me saying like don't invest long term in China because I don't trust those people, the government. I mean, not the Chinese. I'm not. But yeah, you, but you but own like, China stocks. <laughs> but I I went long Baidu last week because it was an awesome trade to do. It was a great setup. So you, you have to be able to you only know, great stock to in the market. I'm glad that's water. I thought you were still crushing like a wine bottle from the weekend or something when you okay. lifted that up. <laughs> so let's go. What's going on? We got some, we got a big week in earnings. Do you Dude. want to share the screen or do you want me to share the screen? And you grab it. I'm, a, I'm on the laptop. I already told everyone, me and you are going to dinner tonight. Oh God, uh, you're telling people that? That's uh, awesome. So get when they see us mess. tomorrow morning, they're going to be like, guys, uh, why are your, why do you have bags under your eyes? And, uh, are, you are like we doing this tomorrow morning? I don't know. Are we doing this again? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. Well, whatever they book us for, we will do. Put it that way. Yeah. You, ain't, you ain't ever told a lie. So look at this Tesla chart here. I'm long <laughs> Tesla. It's up about, what, 2% pre? I'm long yeah. Tesla. 1.6%.
Yeah, I was up two percent earlier. They're yeah, terrible. they got so I guess there's a little bit of bullishness this morning because they, you know, the Fed's been like uh, they've been they've been puppeteering Wall Street Journal. To, this one dude at the Journal to put out articles saying what they want to do. Yeah, and it looks like they're gonna just do twenty five bit basis points, like two more times maybe, and then chill. So like this next meeting, February first, gonna be twenty five. Gonna be very little uh, suspense in that one. Which is good. People, yeah. the, mark, the market likes to know. You know, the market's a, always forward looking, but the market likes certainty. They don't like uncertainty. I would like to move on from inflation and from the Fed and like go back to like just looking at like earnings and shit like that, you know, like bigger. You know, yeah. You know, like what really matters? Because they've been just dominating everything so for so long, a couple of years that, now. That whole macro of scaring everyone, inflation, all this stuff. I mean, Yes, right. it's real eggs, you can't, you know, are up and all that crap, but that's just reality. Like that, that, that shouldn't affect stocks and your trading. Well, the problem is, is that, you know, like people like us, we like to put on like trades that are stock specific, right? And you can see stocks sticking out as really strong or really weak based on, you know, what they're doing with the market. But when you get like those big macro waves that just like engulf the entire market, yeah. of, things like, don't like, stick out. Things don't stick out as much, right? And everything just goes lock limit up or lock limit down in, in footstep for the most part, which, you know, for me, it takes away some of the edge that I have personally. It, it is a, a stock specific market. If you're trying to trade like, and I said this beginning of the year, if you're trying to trade like the Dow or these boring stocks, they ain't doing crap. But if they you're aren't. trading like the Wayfairs, the Teslas, the AMDs, those momentum names, the, yeah. the Netflix, those names have just been on fire for you. And they don't yeah, get so what the market AMD, AMD had a nice move up again this morning, pre-market. They Saw got that. upgraded. They got upgraded. But let's look, let's look at Tesla for just a second. First, let's look at it on a chart, <laughs> right? Uh, this stock traded what? Down to 127. Uh, back up to 135 and no, it went a lot lower than that. Why am I saying 127? What the hell's wrong? With oh, that? It went to like 104, I believe. Yeah. Exactly. So the, short, the shorts were trying to break it, break a hundred. Right. Exactly. And exactly. then they never broke a hundred. So you see that yeah. big green candle, but the second, um, the bigger green candle right off the low is like, yeah. One, one, nine and one six yeah. first week of the month, mm -hmm. that big green candles, you got to figure everyone's, Pounding short it, right? Loading yep. up on shorting stock, thinking Tesla's gonna break a hundred, which is a big it's like, you know, from a you could say support, but really the it, figure. Yeah, that's a good, that's a yeah. good teaching moment for everybody. Stocks, options, people psychologically love the figure. The figure is big round numbers, 150, 125, a dollar, ten dollars. So one trick that I used to use a lot or still do actually is never to like put like if i know you don't like to use limits but if you if you uh i mean you don't like to use stops but if you want like a limit right and you want to get out of something the whole world wants to get out of the same price everybody wants to get out 100 sell it for 99 dollars and 95 cents you'll get yeah, out yeah. you won't get out at 100 because the whole world wants to get out at 100 you so never put break. yeah always put your limits a little bit underneath uh figures is one is one pro tip a little bit underneath not too much and and that's just the point of we always talk about the poker analogy. Don't play your hand, play your opponent's hand. Yes. Where's everyone else thinking Tesla's gonna break or hoping a hundred? So yes. if it, so if it doesn't break, that's why you've had such a drastic move because now all those shorts, they're down what 25% or so? What is it? 133? Exactly. 33 exactly. right around 30% or so. And yeah. they're hoping Tesla breaks down again. So the more it goes up the more their ass is going to sweat and their, their, their ass cheeks because they're going to get squeezed <laughs> with that stuff. And so it's if we get a real squeeze in this name, this stock could trade back to the almost 200, I think. This level right here, where it started its cascade in December. The implied move is bad either. And I think I'm booked for a class Wednesday. So Tesla reports this week. I think I'm doing a class. I think I got booked Wednesday. I'm just trying to see, confirm it on trading Tesla earnings. Because like I said, I already have- Are you? I think You're the earnings guy, dude. Like everybody here that's here for the first time or doesn't watch this show, I don't follow. I, you know, I'm an arrogant son of a bitch and I don't listen to a lot of people, but Lance, I listen to, and in particular during this time of year, because he's an earnings master. 
and and a junkie. Yeah, and a lot of people like to trade earnings after earnings, but that's that's a that's a wimp ass way to do it. That's sissy stuff. Lance puts on big boy trades into earnings. Has it has a, it has, a, has an idea? Has a position? No, but you take it. You take a. You take a. You you know. You plant your flag in the ground. You go for it which is, you know, it's fun. You got to learn how to size that correctly. You don't YOLO. You don't take all your damn money and go, I hope earnings are going to be amazing. So we're going to show you that in a minute. But really, like if he's doing a workshop, I'm, I'm selling you a little bit Thank harder. You. Yeah. But if you're doing this workshop, I'll be there and y'all should be there for sure. And I already have calls, full disclosure. So look at this stock. Let's look. So let's look here at Tesla. If we look at Tesla, previous quarters we like to go through this with everybody implied one day move is 7.29 percent right the, which i would say what's the what's the oh we see the average moves right there so last uh or pardon me i got the the video over it which you know is actually not that crazy last no. quarter was what six and at six point yeah. six five yeah. 10 percent three percent eleven i'm surprised looking at this right now i thought you'd see a lot more double digit responses you you got to figure though back in those days tesla was such a crazy mover and it was such a high price stock yeah that earnings weren't that big of a deal just because it was more of a news momentum name right, right? and right. now it's yeah. it's had like a whole change of character because now you know it's a, a hundred dollar stock there's yeah. some crap with musk it's been such beat down. It's like, it's a whole different game now because so much has happened with Musk, Twitter, Tesla, all that stuff. Right. I actually think now we'll actually see a move just because you it's had- It's kind of suppressed. Things. People are getting complacent in this name, right? They're getting yeah, a little yeah. bit complacent. And like you said, there's that factor that there's going to be more, it's a cheaper stock. So you can have more junkies coming into this. You can have more people throwing stuff around. So- if we look at when are they when is their earnings report Thursday afternoon? No, uh, let me look here. I got it here. It's uh, Wednesday after the close, so we'll, we'll trade it Wednesday during the day. Wednesday okay. Afternoon. So let's look at let's look at the the weeklies, right? So if you look at the weekly, and they got size. Look at this open interest on the one thirty five. Oh, Fifteen thousand contracts, twenty three thousand at one forty. So yeah, so the stock's at one thirty six this morning. Uh, I don't have pre-market quotes for some reason on my options. They they classified me as a professional and try to charge me way too much money for that. So that I never trade I never trade, trade pre-market options. I just don't. Just because the um, uh, trade station wants all the all the goodies. So it's it's one thirty five sixty six now. It was one thirty six pre-market, but let me look if the futures are rolling over a little bit. It's about let's just say one thirty six pre-market. Okay, so I'm looking here at the one forties. And the 140s are at a 55 delta. So on a 1.7% move, we're looking at a dollar higher maybe here, right? So like around under $5. So 145 would be break even, give or take on this open right, right. for Tesla uh, by the end of the week. Which is right around, yeah, it's right around 7% move. Right. Yeah, right around the implied move. You a know, ten dollar move at one hundred thirty five dollars stock. It 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 kind of reminds me of if if you look at Netflix. So Netflix, yeah. is what seven percent? Yeah. But the calls didn't make money though, right? Because yeah. the, it was it was well within the implied move. I think Netflix the implied move was like thirty three bucks, and the stock moved like twenty six dollars higher. Yeah. So unless you bought deep in the money calls, you didn't make money on Netflix. So just everyone out there. That's the lesson that we're trying to teach people. Right. We talk about this a lot during earnings. So this is not a strong, I mean, it's not that strong a case, in my opinion, just based on, just based on historically. You historically. could small it. You could go small though and do like 150s, in my opinion. Small. It, 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 and just hope it has a crazy outsized move. Like you could have one of these outside days where you get like a 15 percenter in the stock and these things will triple or quadruple, right? Yeah. Because they'll be trading around $2 today, maybe, if the stock remains up like this. And, you know, if you get if you get a 15 uh, percent move on $135 stock, you're looking at what, 155 or something like that? Yeah. Also, also, too, you guys got to realize it doesn't report till Wednesday. If yeah. the stock starts moving, yeah, uh, it is a little right. bit this morning. 
you're, these options are going to go up the calls and the puts just on implied volatility increasing. So look for that. That happened with Netflix. It was down like, I think like seven bucks a day before earnings. Mm -hmm. Actually, the calls and the puts were up in value. So you're, you should have implied volatility um, continue to go up before the earnings event. Uh, <laughs> Jason asked, what about Softy? Yeah, CRM, just had, out. CRM had news with Elliot this morning. Elliot. That, so Elliot's an activist. Elliot's an activist, right? They don't they, just they, buy shit. They shake things up. They get they fire people. They get people. They get you to sell businesses. They're good. They're they're good for shareholders. So I don't think CRM is up as much as it should be. Honestly, I don't on. either. They um they used to front run all their stuff. They used to be dirty. They used to buy like short dated. Elliot, what do you mean used yeah, to? Yeah. Of course, yeah. they still do. They still and, do. And he was you would you could tell in certain positions. You know, it was them because they would buy millions of calls and then come yeah. out an activist stake and then just get assigned the stock. So you want to hear a funny story? You want to hear a funny story? So Elliot, I mean, uh, I issued a, I, <laughs> I issued a buy on Salesforce on Friday last week for uh, for this 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 an analyst fade system I have called 180. They got downgraded and the stock, the guy was totally crazy. And I love the price action because they got another downgrade. The stock's been killed. This guy was like a terrible analyst. He's late on everything. And the stock didn't budge. It didn't budge to the it's downside. Bullish. It's very bullish. So maybe they were already absorbing it on the, maybe they were in cohoots. I, I don't like to be yeah. a conspiracy. I don't like to be conspiratorial, but I actually am a little bit. And so maybe they were like, they, they co-conspired to do this downgrade, hoping they could get some stock in the basement much cheaper. You never know. People, yeah. are, it's, there's money. When there's money involved, people do wild shit that I've learned in this life and people do crazy shit for money and so even hedge fund managers do especially now when it's like you have to figure out so many people had so much money six months ago and now they don't have that money anymore that luxury and yeah now they want it it's like a drug they want it back in them so they'll do crazy stuff just to get that that uh that bankroll again um so yeah, softy you, you, you want to look at softy here yeah let's look at softy softy's been very boring I'm not going to lie lately. Right. And, and, you know, Google had a huge move. Uh, Google did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Huge move for Google, which was real good. And Softy really ain't been doing much. Softy and Apple. Uh, this is actually kind of a better case in a way, if we look at the four day options on this. Uh, so it's a $240 stock. Let's see what they're, they're implying on Softy. I bet you like 12 bucks, I'm going to say. I don't think anything crazy in Softy. Okay, so here's Microsoft. So Microsoft has done what wow. the last? So it was down seven and almost eight percent the last it's quarter. A big move for Softy. Implied one day move four percent. That's not wild. Not wild. No, so, no, yeah. not at all. Right. That I think that's really light for for right. Softy. I mean, right. maybe people don't think they're going to shock the world just because. I, I don't know what's new in it. Chat GBT. Maybe they talk about that stuff, but like, yeah, you, you know, big, big tech, large cap tech, your IBMs, your Microsoft, your Apples up until Google last week, they've been very, very mute. Um, but maybe this, they stock, this stock is really lagging. Microsoft is lagging the market. Look on the year. It's not even up a percent. You know, everything else in the world is up across the world look yeah, at this yeah. literally across the nine percent euro stocks hang sang's up 11 percent. all I mean, the uh shit stocks the highly shorted the docks, our friends in germany the docks is up eight nice. percent yeah Nasdaq's up six and <laughs> it's softy hasn't done anything i guess my point is is that it's lagged but the market's leaning bullish and I tend to think that people like to play catch up on, on laggards in both bull, bull, bull cases. So if they give you a reason to like this stock, the stock could explode to the upside. Could do a lot better from here. I on. agree. I agree with a lot of with a lot of uh, beat down large cap tech that right. has been the love. You know, yeah. Netflix was already strong. Yes, it was up, but it wasn't up enough. That's what she said. Um, but all the other names, I do feel like they can start waking up because, um, you know, we've seen we've seen the worst of the worst, the Kathy Wood, the junk stocks, the highly short, the highly short stocks move. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I mean, up until really Google last week, Salesforce today, Amazon started catching a little bit of a bid last week. Tesla's starting to play catch up. You could I start like a straddle in this stock, I think. Look at these 230 okay. puts. Oh, I... you're going to no. straddle it? Huh? A straddle it? <laughs> I'd like to be long a straddle, I think. Okay. I think it's going to have an outsized move. I'll be long the 250 call and long the 230 put maybe. I don't know. Oh, so you're gonna, you're going to you're going to widen it out pretty. Oh yeah, small money, but going okay. home run derby. I think that yeah, yeah, I'll widen it out. I mean, but th like a $10 move in the stocks 5%. Yeah, 4%. Percent. Which is yeah. not. They could do it in a regular day. Well, so that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Look at this. $2? You could quadruple your money on that if they shit the bed. Employees, Ron says, employees are selling stuff. Why everyone? Everyone's so obsessed with laying off employees. Mm. That that all that stuff, like they're selling the employees are laying off this that. All that is just more fuel to the fire for stocks to go up, in my opinion. Like I, I think it, I think earnings it, season. Back. Yeah, I mean, every time that you've seen an announcement for for a uh, firing for a people, layoff, stocks have gone up. Stocks have been rallying, but stocks have been rallying on pretty much everything to start the yeah. year. To be fair. I think that the I think earnings going to be a little bit different though. I think some of these stocks are still going to get shot. They're going to get well, shot. I I think if outlook is just playing out horrible, they're going to get yeah. taken, taken out back and get shot. So, but I also think like Netflix, you're going to get some free passes. Yeah, they're just going to yeah. be like, oh, it's it's not the end of the world. Stocks up twenty. Fifty fifty ball is leaning to the long side, to the up, bullish for sure. So if it's if it's a fifty fifty ball, it's going higher. It's got to be a clear cut, terrible thing, terrible announcement, terrible move. So softies the 24th after the market. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a few other names and then I got to go upstairs and, and trade. Um, yeah. You got Boeing Wednesday morning, softy Tuesday after the close. You got some boring stocks Tuesday morning, the, the boring Dow stocks we don't care about. Uh, you got some airliners Thursday morning and then Thursday after the close, you got Intel. I still got a couple calls. Boeing's got, been crazy bullish. Look how mad bullish this dude, stock is. Airliners, travel stocks have been crazy bullish. Yeah. Are you but, trying but, to but, travel but, anywhere? I mean, like I have a family of five. I'm looking at spring break trips and I'm like, damn, bro. Insane. Y'all need to calm down. <laughs> Y'all need to calm down. Dude, we're but, staying uh, at a hotel. We look, the cost of our hotel is insane. It I, is, mean, yeah. I mean, it's just it's insane to travel. It's you insane. got a uh, you got some of the the Vegas Las Vegas Sands Thursday if they actually report. It's and not feeling so much like it's so funny because it's like the Fed is stopping and they're like, okay, the recession is here, but it doesn't feel like the recession is here, does it? it Rolls Royce sold the most vehicles last uh, last quarter than any other time, and they're half a million each. Hmm. I mean, I don't I don't get. Yeah, maybe recession, inflation, all that stuff, but I mean, we kind of call that stuff months ago. So if we are in it, that's why stocks are going up. When you start hearing, oh, we are in a recession, um, the market's, again, always forward-looking. Yeah. So Boeing has rallied since their last earnings from, what, $135 to $207? Are you kidding me? It's not a 50% move. That's why the Dow's been so strong, too. Yeah, you know? but the Dow is lagging, dude. I think yeah. Boeing could now have I some downside. It's lagging this year is what I'm saying. It hasn't lagged for like a year. It's outperformed like crazy. But there might be a rotation out of these kind of Boeing stocks and into the Teslas of the world. Not a bad idea to have a little, you know, outside the box link trade, long Tesla, short Boeing. <laughs> I know it's not correlated other than one is like back to old school. One is an old, old school, school versus company new school. versus new school. Yeah. That, I mean, that's been the theme of the year. The, the high valuation, zero yeah. earnings. You know, new IPO stocks are bullish. All the old, uh, all the old dogs, the Johnson and Johnsons, the Apples, the Boeings, the Exxon's ain't been doing much. So I think we're done. <laughs> I think it was a good session, bro. I have tomorrow a presentation where I'm gonna thank you, Sean, for for sharing that. Where I'm gonna talk about this financial hurricane of 2023. I still think that there's gonna be some. I think we're getting a little bit complacent. I think there could be a lot of bullishness, but I think there's a little bit of complacency in the world that's setting in. And every time we get calm, there's a new black swan. Call me conspiratorial, call me whatever. 
but they introduced something new to keep us preoccupied and terrified. And so I think there's going to be some, I think there's going to be some financial issues in the system, not like tech earnings, not this and that, but like all these, like these Ponzi schemes, Goldman getting investigated, et cetera. I think there's going to be some financial bodies that flow to the surface. So I'm having a presentation, talk about what we can do about that. Uh, be there, click on this link to join. There's a link they just shared in the, in the chat. Lance is doing an earnings thing this week where he's going to go over to Wednesday. And uh, yeah, we're trying to help you all. I hope you guys find value in this crush the open. A lot of people like to have early more, have like to have like really relaxed Monday mornings where they drink lattes and pet their cats and shit like that. (laughs) Yeah. And like, just like ease their way into the week. But Lance and I take a little bit of a different approach. We got to smash this stuff. We got to get it going. So I hope you all appreciate this Monday morning, Crush the Open. We might move the time. A little. Actually, we don't have to move the time. We're now allowed to have people come and join us. So we had our, our biggest showing today that we've had in weeks. Imagine yeah, that. Yeah. Imagine it. that we had 370 people watching us this morning, Lance. Let's that, double that's, that. That's huge. And then also, too, make sure. You that's can watch more than the roundtable last week, I think. I think that's more than all of them. So. <laughs> uh, Make sure you can watch this on YouTube. Uh, I don't know if it's live on YouTube or not, but subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can like us, turn on notifications, leave a comment, all that stuff. And we'll probably have more video bangs and stuff like that in the works. And I got to go, Jeff, because in 15 seconds. Yeah, let's go. I'll see you tonight. I'll see you tonight. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to it. Night. Peace. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Have a great week. LFG.